So do you see the point, though? If you are playing and you're not real clear on what this new authority even is, you tell somebody they get to have the monologue of victory, they're not used to this, they're going to fold backstory authority into it as if they right, had that content. That's exactly my problem. That's why I, I ask because the cool games which gives us this right. authority manipulation different kinds in different techniques. ways, all sorts of things. Yeah, uh -huh. they are really cool, but they don't tell us how to how to put constraints right. or which or, kind or of authority is involved. Right. Yes. Now I agree with you about this, and that is why in two thousand four I came up with. Let's talk about the different kinds of authorities that get distributed in different mm -hmm. ways. And I've been hammering that ever since, that we don't even have to have a weird game mm -hmm. to have this question. This is something that Machek and I talked about. So I will repeat myself just a little bit right here. Okay. Because I really like the example that I thought up right in the middle of, of the interview which was mm -hmm. about, you know, you're in the bar and I made a joke. It's, you know, it's the 80s bar, right? You know, it looks like it's the 80s and everything. And you, you go in the bar and you say my character, I, I, whatever, he, my character, Steve, I, I don't care how you say it, says, well, I walk across the bar. I want to, I'm talking to the bartender. I go talk to the bartender. Mm -hmm. And I talked about how in one game, the game master treats that statement as a constraint on their mm -hmm. situational authority ongoing and then says the bartender, you know, looks at you and talks to you because mm -hmm. you've done it. Whereas in another game, that bartender, it is up to the game master. I mean, your character is like frozen in the beginning of the movement mm -hmm. until the game master says, okay, you get to the bartender mm -hmm. or does something else that stops you. So, but the rules of a role-playing game never tell you which one of those is the case. Yes. And so it's not just the games with, with distributions of authority that are formalized or change that are, have this problem. They all have this problem. Mm -hmm. So the uh, so therefore, at least some of us have attempted to be fairly specific in describing what is the job, what and it's best to talk about it in terms of you know responsibilities, right? What mm -hmm. is, what are you responsible for that other people basically have to listen to? You know, you may take in all the suggestions you want or whatever, but you have to do it. In the game that we were playing in dialect, one of the players actually really doesn't like this very much. When it comes to his turn, he has to pick one of the cards that he's got. Three cards, which will be, you know, the word or the linguistic concept for the upcoming play. And mm -hmm. they have to um, say this card. And then they have to say it goes with this aspect of our isolated community. Mm -hmm. And then they give it to all of us and say, open conversation about what this new word actually is. I mean, mm -hmm. And we know from the card, you know, it's a word for a unit of time or it's a word for danger or, or whatever. Right. We know that. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this became hard for him, especially when it was a weird card that said something like pick a previous word, say why we no longer use it. And mm -hmm. say what aspect this lockdown is associated with, right? What's, what, what, what is this word? Um, and we pick one of the previous words and say why we no longer use it. And there will mm -hmm. be no conversation. We'll just go straight into play with characters, you know, reacting to or talking about not having this word in mm -hmm. some way. So, um, so this particular player suffered partly because it was a very abstract card, right? You have to pick a previous word, say somebody, you know, doesn't want us to say it anymore and why. And it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of content there. And mm -hmm. he, I think out of very kind of understandable human motivations, kept trying to take all the places where he had to say 
and kept trying to turn it into a conversation. You know, mm -hmm. everybody, you know, what do you think of this? Or does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. And a couple of times people kind of responded by saying, we don't get to say, we don't get to say whether that's okay. Mm -hmm. We, you shouldn't be asking us whether this is okay. We just tell mm -hmm. us so we can get on with playing. We don't want a committee mm -hmm. discussion about it. We're not supposed to have one. And yet for him, he knew, I mean, we were moving into the later stages of play. He knew this kind of thing was very consequential and he felt a little uncomfortable being in charge of such an important cultural shift in mm -hmm. our group, no, in the whole group. So it was hard for him to proceed without some social approval of the decisions he was making. Right. So mm -hmm. that's how am I going to put it? That's kind of understandable. You can see why a person yeah. would struggle with this. Um, yeah. especially if you have, you know, if, if you are playing this game for the first time and, mm -hmm. um, and also I will say with dialect, it's pretty abstract. It's a, it's a, not an easy thing. It's not like saying, choose an existing NPC. They've died. That's, mm -hmm. you know, you can kind of say, okay, well, it's kind of brutal of me just to put the chop on one of our NPCs like that. But if it's my job, I guess I'll pick that one. But when you say uh -huh. this thing about this word and you have to make up this abstract content about, you know, saying this word can't be used, it's it's weird, right? You can, you're uh -huh. like, what do I have authority over actually, right? Well, I'll try this. Is that okay with everyone, right? So I'm trying to come up with things that make people have a little trouble with these shared authorities. One of them is uh -huh. confusing, of squishing them all together, right? <laughs> Another mm -hmm. one is this, when it's a little weird and non-consensual, but you kind of want it to be consensual. Um, so all of the, I'm trying to find very understandable, non-blame. I'm not saying anybody's stupid, right? Of course. It's, it's, and so that if a person confuses that thing about the killer clown, you can't really blame them. No one told them those two authorities are different. So mm -hmm. you just have to find ways to teach the games this is something that role-playing games are very bad at as texts. Mm -hmm. There are three things you can do with a text like this. One is, for lack of a better word, shut up and do it procedure. Right? Do this in mm -hmm. this order. Mm -hmm. If you want why, call the help desk. That's not, you know, <laughs> just fucking do this the way I say, okay? Trust me, it's good, you know. Use the authorities you get. Use the procedures you get. You have these choices, you know. We'll see what you do with it. Just follow, you know, huh? how you're supposed to do it. Like this. That's one way to do it. Another way is to explain it in a very encyclopedic way. Right, everything you could possibly ask or want to know at any point during play, it's answered. Right, so if you're introducing the attributes, you explain every rule or important rules that go with each attribute as you go along because you're getting confused, you're trying to explain everything at all times. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's but even if it's well organized, you know, these explanations for this are here and here are here, it's like there's no end to it. You're going to keep your there, you're just going to mm -hmm. explain everything. If you have a setting, well, I have to explain everything about the setting. If I have a system with nuances, I've got to explain not just what they are, how to do them, but why, how it fits. Mm -hmm. After the 10th episode, you will find that this attribute will be affecting this power differently, right? You're explaining it all. Okay, so that's, mm -hmm. that's the second thing. The third thing is a... A way to, how am I going to put it? A way to teach it, specifically tuned to teaching it to people who don't know it. Right? Uh -huh. The first one seems like that, but no. The first one has no learning quality. It's pure procedure of exactly how it's played, when you uh -huh. know how. When you know how. Okay? It says you basically know how this is your formal outline of all the procedures involved, right? Of the procedures in order. 
Here, teaching the game, you may find that the order of what you do is a little different because some things are easy to pick up even if they come a little later in play. Some things are easy to grasp and form a really good foundation for understanding those other rules. So make sure that this one gets, te gets taught first. Or huh? before you play, say this, see what they think. During play, do this, do that, because you are dealing with people who don't know how to play this game. And there are things that are easy to learn if you only do them properly. Don't use this subroutine, right, of combat. Yeah. Don't do it. Just don't do that. You have the option to do it. Don't use that option. Don't declare an extended contest. Don't declare, you know, a multi-step contest. Do that later. Do it in later sessions. Yeah. Your first session will not live or die because you didn't use that extended contest, right? And even mm -hmm. if your first session is fairly limited in system use, you know which ones you should be using that will be a very solid foundation for learning the later ones, right? So that's the mm -hmm. pedagogical approach. So you've got raw procedure, you know, for knowledgeable use, the best reference, really, right? You know, because it's all in order mm -hmm. and it's all really, but you have to know it first. Then second, or be familiar enough with that way to play first. The second one is explaining it all. You have any questions about it? I got your answer right here. Third, at, at every level, right? Every level. You're an expert mm -hmm. in role playing. Ah, well, you see, here's the footnote. See Appendix 2 for <laughs> how this relates to everything Vincent Baker ever wrote, right? Or whatever. So all yeah. that stuff. And then the third one, which is this pedagogical thing, which is specifically based on people who don't know and how you get into this game this way. Role-playing games have the same problem as biology textbooks, as texts. They try to do all three. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Yeah, because we have procedures of play, then we have this complex rule books that we expect people to read and understand. Uh, I think, I think that might be the reason why Fantasy Flight games in their uh, uh, board games give you two rule books. You have a, right. a rules heavy rule book, and then you have Start to Play, which basically tells exactly. you everything, which is of putting it as you play, as you play. Yeah. And which is nothing but sensible. Absolutely nothing, but it is completely sensible to do this. Mm -hmm. And so I recall, as a biology professor, raising the question as we decided what textbook we wanted to use for a course, mm -hmm. hey, what is our book even for? What is our book even for? Is the book like the reference encyclopedia for stuff that we will be doing pedagogically in class that we design? Or mm -hmm. is the book a pedagogical process for beginners and we are the encyclopedia during class? Right? Mm -hmm. You can go either way for, for a science class. What you can't do is squish it all together and expect your students mm -hmm. to appreciate the encyclopedia as they're trying to figure out like the basic first concept. You can't do it. And so it, it was really shocking how many professors resisted this, in my opinion, extremely obvious, you know, claim that we should decide mm -hmm. how we relate me, the book, students, which, I mean, what kind of students are we talking about? Have they had seven biology classes or not, right? <laughs> how familiar are they? Is this the first part of the time in the curriculum that any of them have seen real immunology? If so, they're beginners. So mm -hmm. if not, if this is a course that has, you know, these three classes behind it that all dealt with immunology, well, you don't have to. Now we can have a more encyclopedic approach. See what I mean? I mean, but trying to talk to professors to get them to acknowledge this and to think about it yeah. was very difficult in many cases. So, mm -hmm. um, so it's the same thing a bit with role-playing. What is the book 
four. 